We're now ready to run our first pass on our overlay design. We select overlay. Calculating over the overlay changes, the cross sections and the depth range polygons. And cut fill volume returned. Here we have the overlay sections and strings done in stages. Our first stage here, nothing in the reconstruction area and our second stage. Notice as I zoom in that the cross sections are colour coded in relation to their depth. Similarly, the depth range polygons or isopacks show the relationship between our overlay tin and the existing surface. Areas shown as brown are above 150mm overlay. If you select the tabulate button, this table appears here. You can select your depth range type. Here we're selecting depth, the file, the depth range file, position a point top left hand corner of your table and a uh, heading for your uh, tabulation of your depth. Under the font button there's a model for the uh, table that gets created. If we select process, create a table which has a visual representation of a colour versus the associated depth. Here's a profile of the center line of our overlay strings. That's the string that gets duplicated from your reference alignment. In this section here, section one of our overlay, we have our overlay uh, points. And in our second overlay section, joining those two is a straight line grade. This area here represents the full road reconstruction area. At a later stage we will transfer these levels to our reference alignment and this section here for the full road reconstruction will be edited manually. Here's a profile of one of our overlay cross sections with the nominal 3% crossfall and the colour coding representing the uh, isopacks. As I step through the cross sections you'll see the sections are highlighted, uh, green, yellow and brown areas. The brown areas are the result of the limitation of our initial run, the 3% uh, crossfall with the minimum 50 mil overlay. Uh, this uh, particular uh, feature here does not take into account the super elevation on the existing road, so hence you would expect to see large areas of brown. As I pointed out before, this is a initial run, so the initial run uh, showing these brown areas would point out uh, areas where on your existing where you'd have to match uh, super or the existing road or future super. If you have a look at the reports generated by our overlay, there's a overlay report option. Here are the changes, your left band width out to your edge strings and height and cross falls. The volume report file is an end area report similar to the uh, design apply many. A data file can be written out saving all these variables and then read in at a later stage. In our first overlay run we utilize a default crossfall on the left hand side of minus three percent. We now wish to run our overlay utilizing the existing crossfall on the road taking into account any crossfall changes in particular super elevation. Here we select row crown and the row crown string copied onto our cutback reference model which was created by joining all the row crown strings from our survey. The crossfalls between the two strings will be loaded at a 20 meter interval. Rather than at every change you can load critical points only which should be the start end points and tangent points. We're going to use critical points or non-critical points at every 20 meters. So again low cross falls. Typically on the right hand side of the road select our row crown string every 20 meters and low cross falls. Running our overlay with these cross falls instead of our default minus 3 
should give us some more uniform overlay and eliminate most of these brown areas that were over 150 millimeters overlay. If we go to our section view now, you can see there's a more uniform overlay. If we step through the section views, the crossfalls now match the existing road. Still taking into account our minimum depths. We can edit the table and smooth out our crossfalls, taking out large chunks of changes that ha just have the same crossfall. And again, run our overlay. If we now look at that section of the road, on the left hand side is a constant minus 3% crossfall. Any changes in the crossfall table can be saved off to a file and read in a, at a later stage. Crossfall strings have been generated, green on the right hand side and red on the left hand side. We go to our long section and we profile the right hand side crossfall. It shows the crossfalls are represented as heights similar to the super alignment. On the right side setup we can select crossfall strings and the edit button. This option allows us to edit the right hand side crossfall string and smooth out the crossfalls. A lot easier option rather than going through the table. Process and regenerate your section view. Here's the old table representing the varying crossfalls. We can now load the crossfalls from the edited crossfall string. If we scroll down to the areas that we edited, you can now see the constant crossfalls of 3%. Any edits in the crossfall panel can again be written out and saved to a crossfall file and read in at a later stage. So far in our overlay design, we have used the overlay mode called normal. Again, the normal option utilizes the crossfalls set up in your left and right and the minimum depth overlay. It cuts your cross section, looks at the left and right side, looks for the highest point, applies the minimum depth crossfall and then the crossfalls from your left and right tabs. That produces two points at your road centerline and 12D utilizes the highest point for the level of your road centerline. They are on the model in your results tab, the model for minimum and maximum points. The next option is the use cross falls only. In this option we are trying to again produce a level point at the center the crossfalls from the left and right setup tabs are again used but they are projected from the edge strings back to the road center line creating two points and again the highest point is used. Care should be taken referring to your isopacks to make sure that you're not getting too close to areas like this when you adjust these crossfalls. We'll now jump to the spreadsheet I.O. option and come back to the use reference Z values and crossfalls only later on. A standard Excel file overlay edit is available under your library. We can open that file in Excel. When you go to Excel you have to enable macros. Back inside 12D we're going to select the CSV output and fill in a file overlay design. You can select export, export now which will output the levels of your overlay centerline uh, to this file here. And if you want this to be an automated process while you're using the uh, overlay mode called spreadsheet you can say auto export. 
These are for export only. Once I'm in the spreadsheet and I adjust my road sent lines, save this file, when I come back into 12D, the application of the overlay will then read that updated file. Inside the spreadsheet there's a browse button to browse for your overlay design file and you select read. We just need to adjust this column. It now reads in the change the original and adjusted level at this stage here are the same and then it gives you the uh, the grades. So for our design parameter speed of 90 we have a maximum change of grade of 0.5 so it then highlights all those points with the um, uh, maximum grade change. And the resolution here is quite high so over on the side there is a graph produced showing the points. Again this is the area for the full road reconstruction if I grade across down to here, you can also see the other section of my overlay. In the spreadsheet we can analyse the each individual grade and on the side here is the applicable speed for that type of change in grade. If we adjust this level here to say 8.5 You can see the grade adjustment, the speed there, so if we can lift up a bit further. It then adjusts the grade and gives us a change of grade applicable to a 90k speed environment. If I scroll down the side here, the graph shows the old point and the new point. Once I've manipulated my center line looking at the change in grades, I can then write out my original file. back to 12D. As we're in our setup mode, we're, on, we're in the spreadsheet mode option. When I select overlay, it will automatically read the updated spreadsheet file. While in either of the options, normal, cross falls or spreadsheet, we can transfer the levels that are produced on our overlay sent line to our road reference alignment. We select overlay to do that transfer. This is the profile of our road center line for the overlay string. If we now go and profile our reference alignment, which previously had no levels on at all, go back to our long section and those levels have been transferred onto our reference alignment. We can now go back to the final stage of using reference Z values and cross force only. That way it will use our reference alignment string. If we do any uh, grading on our alignment string manually, we can still run the overlay option using the cross falls on our left and right setup. Since we're now going to use our independently graded alignment string with these new levels, we do not want to transfer Z values to our reference alignment anymore. We now select overlay using our reference alignment. Here we have a profile of our reference alignment string. Uh, updated and graded in the section where we are doing the full road reconstruction. Now we're looking at grading of our points from our overlay section. A good way to do it is to add in the alignment string from the center line which shows you the overlay points. And If we bring up the editor for our new graded alignment string We can now delete the IP points and with having the other alignment string in the background or in the, in the cross section, uh, long section, we can see where the old alignment string used to be. So it may be a matter of deleting IP points for a parabola and maybe a few points along a straight. Our alignment string has been set up as a design speed and so the default IPs are alignment speed IPs. So if I now just go insert, I can insert an IP in here and it will put in a radius for me. So if we finish our alignment string, we can now use this alignment string in our overlay 
again through the setup here and picking the independently graded alignment string. In this session we're looking at the overlay but in relation to the super elevation developed on our uh, reference alignment from the original speed design table. On the left hand setup we can tick on extract reference super alignment super elevation and go low cross falls from string. Then populate the panel with the cross falls from your super alignment. Assume on the right hand side, extract cross falls. Using those cross falls from your super alignment is only applicable when utilising the uh, reference Z values and cross falls only and spreadsheet IO, as these two options here will produce two points at the road centre line and select the highest. So in some circumstances, only one side or part of the road will match the cross falls on your super alignment. So we're going to select use reference Z values and cross falls only. And again we run our overlay. Now if we step through our cross sections you can see the super elevation has been applied via the super elevation speed tables. If we again have a look at our profile on those cross fall strings, here the right hand side, we now see the cross fall will replicate the super elevation. So if we do the left hand side, we then have a similar profile. In this part of the overlay we're going to look at the scarification. We've selected an area here between change 47800 and 900 to perform some scarifying. If I turn on scarification, there's a model here, overlay scarify cross sections and a colour. We filled out the uh, depth options in here rather than an overall depth. So between this change from there to there, we're going to go from 0 to 0.1, maintain 0 0.1 over the 25 metres, and then back to change 4790 and back to 0. 12 d will then generate new cross sections down here, 100 millimetre below, and use those cross sections to perform the overlay. So if we select overlay, Here I profile the new alignment. You can see the roads drop by 100 millimetres. And if I add in the overlay sections, scarify sections, you can see those points here. And if we go to a cross section and we profile those, you see here's the overlay being taken off. There's 100 millimetres, so the new cross section is developed, taking into account that scarification. The Scarify cross sections are duplicated outside the Scarify area, so we end up with an entire model of Scarified sections, and that's the sections that 12D runs the overlay against, even though you're only doing the Scarification in this area here.